many universes and many Earths. Narration. Also, if you'll allow me to translate, what the narrator means to say is we're about to do some crazy imaginative in this movie. But don't worry, the multiverse exists, so we get a make-up stuff that makes no sense card. Deal. Are we going to see the child? Talking animals. Also, one minute in and I already want to be watching another movie that involves James Bond fighting alongside a leopard. So many worlds, but connecting them all is dust along with many, many young adult cliches, one can only assume. Also, could the narration be more mind-numbing? feel like I'm on Spaceship Earth, learning about the Phoenicians. Dust was here before the witches of the air, the Egyptians of the water, and the bears of the ice. Jeez, movie, we aren't even two minutes in. You've already expositioned my brains out with talking animal soul sidekicks, dusty world connectors, and three different element-based races. Let a girl breathe, will ya? In my world. Scholars invented an alethiometer, a golden compass. Roll compass! One compass remains, however, and only one who can read it. Only one person can save the entire world, and that person is a child cliche. Hurry up, Roger, or they'll bubble you! Who's doing what to who now? There's a curse on this gate. You Egyptians ought to know that. That's Egyptianist. Crossing this gate is worse than touching someone's demon with your bare hands. It's time for the demon questions, chapter one. We already know that demons and their people feel each other's pain, but how does that work? If your demon armadillo gets run over, does its master die too? If a dog has his tail stepped on, where would the human feel it? If these are spirit guides that are with a person at all times, does that mean at all times? And are they doing the same thing their human counterpart is doing? For instance, does one have to have two toilets available in all bathrooms? When someone is showing someone else how their <clears throat> golden compass points, are the partner's demons doing the same thing, or do they just have to watch? I'm honestly not sure which situation is more disturbing. No one will be seated during a dramatic Lord Asriel looking at a marble dramatically portion of the movie. I'll not dispense with centuries of tolerance and free inquiry. If you needed further proof, this film did not take place in our world or in present day. I guess no one has noticed or cared about the broken glass and poisonous brandy all over the floor. Dust is flowing into this man from a city in another world. Invisible, intangible, inaccessible. Incomprehensible, inconsequential, inedible. I wouldn't recommend the Tokai, gentlemen. It's caught. I'm not sure which makes less sense. Bond, with a beard, is just now getting around to warning people not to drink poisonous brandy, or that he didn't immediately turn in the person who poisoned it as soon as he knew. I will not have my niece slithering around like an alley cat. And so begins Demon Questions Chapter 2. Do animals exist that are demons? Could one have a pet along with their demon? How would one know that an animal is simply an animal and not a demon? Will this movie give us any answers, or just keep bringing up fantastical terminology? Uh, at least I'm pretty sure I can answer that last one. We learned about dust and everything. What do you know about dust? Damn, Daniel, you're the one that told her to stay in the closet while you wax poetic about the powers of dust, so of course she's going to be curious. Lara, my dear, the tutor of metaphysics tells me that you've missed your lesson again. I'm glad this movie is differentiating itself as much as it can from other young adult novels. The great dining hall, the music cues, discount Dumbledore, chatting with the girl who lied about her metaphysics class. This movie just went full on Harry Potter and I don't even think it cares if we know it. Mrs. Coulter. There's an old saying that goes something like, whenever Nicole Kidman enters a room, all the men <coughs> rise. I believe Billy Bob Thornton said it. Who's she? Don't know. But she shut up the master, all right? You mean the master that's sitting about three feet directly in front of you and clearly able to hear this conversation? Why do movie characters speak as if only the audience can hear them? As a matter of fact, I have had an audience with the Bear King himself. I even brought him and his family some Cokes and then found out they were really into Pepsi. And that's when I learned that I shouldn't believe everything I see on TV. Let me deal with Azrael. You mustn't deny me this little thing. You really mustn't. And by little thing, she means kidnapping? Because this is kidnapping. And welcome to Demon Questions Chapter 3. Is demon cuddling this world's version of playing footsie under the table? Do the masters always know what their demon is doing? Why do some demons speak English to their human counterpart and some just make animal noises? What if your demon ends up being an elephant or a fish? Some poor kid is just treading water his whole life wondering how I got stuck with a demon gripper. Now we're jack being Also, this movie is chock full of reunions. Daniel Craig and his dead James Bond girlfriend, Ava Green. Ian McKellen and Lord of the Rings co-wizard Christopher Lee. Kristen Scott Thomas and her Gosford Parks co-star, Derek Jacobi. Also, also, with Ian McKellen and Ian McShane, this movie is a single home, or maybe even a Malcolm away from completing the Ian trifecta. If he succeeds in proving the existence of these other worlds, it will contradict centuries of teaching. I guess, but also these people would be part of the discovery of other worlds and interdimensional travel, so win-win? Also, if they laid this metaphor for the Catholic Church on any thicker, it would be frozen molasses with a Pope's hat on top. Also known as a golden compass. Reroll credits? I guess we're doing Demon Questions Chapter 4. Is this type of dog always your demon if you work in the house service industry? Does your demon relate to your profession? Seriously. 
demons, man. How can a movie be both overly expositional and still completely underexplained? People also travel by solid metal dirigible in this alternate universe because apparently the laws of gravity and physics also work completely differently. Look, Pan, it's got loads of pictures around the edge. No reason for the headmaster to explain all that, I guess. Just give Lyra the compass and hope for the best. And while you're at it, you must learn to control your demon. Now, kiss me. Who's doing what to who now? What do they want with us? Why are we here? Because apparently you're the savior in this episode of Harry Potter and the Lord of the Neverending Stardust of Ember, the Airbender, and the Wardrobe demands it. General Oblation Board. G O B. Gobless. Seems like a stretch, but sure, Encyclopedia Blonde, why not? This way. So did curious demon George just wait for Lyra to get out here before going after her? Because he was already between her and the window, and could easily have gotten to her before now. Who threw that net on her? Did these gobbler knobs somehow know this was where she was going, and one of them was just waiting inside? Or was it the Egyptians that rescue her later? Either way, none of this makes any sense. But what are you doing here? We've been in your shadow ever since you left Jordan College watching over you. Okay, fine, but how exactly did you know she would need you at this place at this moment? She literally just escaped from Nicole Kidnapperman mere minutes ago. Movie decides ripping off Harry Potter isn't enough and throws in some Pirates of the Caribbean for good measure. It's a truth measure. A golden compass. Re-re-roll credits? I'm sorry, but there's a rule in the Cinema Sins holy text. If you have three legit roll credits moments in your first half hour of your movie, you automatically get an extra 33 cents. So say it, the Faith Rhinos of the Sahara Mistlands, and so it shall always be. By pointing at three symbols, you can ask any sort of question you can imagine. That's some bull right there. What if I really want to ask it why every time I masturbate I get angry and throw a half-eaten carrot at my pet turtle Theodosia? Exactly what three symbols would I use for that? Huh? Mrs. Coulter, are you familiar with the prophecies of the witches? Oh dear god, how much of this expositional blow am I supposed to remember? Will there be a quiz? Is there any way to understand any of this without... Oh, what's the phrase for it again? Oh yes, reading the book? They'll seek her out like bees to honey. And they literally have a golden snitch. Movie has decided to potter so hardcore I'm surprised it doesn't have clay all over its hands. Svalbard. Kingdom of the Ice Bears. Tennessee, House of the Sins. Oh, I thought we were just playing that game where you're by yourself and you randomly announce the location you're at. My name is Serafina Pekela, clan queen of the witches of Lake Inara. And I am Sinfrista Cinematica, clan king of Go F*** Yourself. You're an aeronaut. Can I go up in your ship? Considering all the shit that has happened with Lyra when she wanders off with strangers, you would think that she wouldn't be so eager to run off with another one. At this point, Lyra deserves whatever happens to her. Without my armor, I cannot go to war, and I am an armored bear. But you're also a bear bear, right? So bear the shit out of this village and get the armor back. A bear's armor is his soul, as your demon is your soul. Like, for real or metaphorically? I swear, as unflinchingly abstract as this movie is, I honestly can't tell. I will say the CG animal effects in this are kind of astonishing. There's a reason this won the Oscar that year for visual effects. I wasn't planning on taking a cent off for it, but since it kept a Pirates movie and a Transformers movie from claiming the Oscar, traction well deserved. I didn't realize going into this movie we'd be watching a lot of the story unfold through the actual f***ing golden compass. Let's not be too hasty. The way I see it, there's no need for a dust-up. But there are several more men with guns that could turn around and shoot Roadhouse. Also, I like how Sam Elliott turns any movie he's in, no matter the genre, into a western. That's some pretty fast work, Miss Lyra. Yeah, I'm struggling to keep up, so let me see if I have this straight. Space Cowboy Whistler here is now working with the giant pocket watch girl, the Egyptians of the Caribbean, Polar Bear Gandalf, and a Vesper the Witch cameo to go save a bunch of kids and the professor from Evil Satine and her band of petty priests, all because of something we're just calling dust. Do I get that right? Carry on, I guess. One way or another. It's better that I've sent Mrs. Coulter after the child. She has the highest standing SAG card among us. I want to die in a rocking chair, not a hydrogen fire. Not trying to belabor this point, but I really think Sam Elliott thinks he's in a Lonesome Dove sequel. Sam Elliott's don't take kindly to trespassers. It's the only way to read. This reminds me of that episode of Star Trek Voyager, where the crew feels they have to travel through Borg territory to get home, even though they could have probably figured out anything f***ing else that made sense. Regardless, Janeway decides to make a deal with the Borg for safe passage, which in turn kills off countless species. This really has nothing to do with the movie, but I just wanted to point out that Captain Janeway is a homicidal maniac. Also, wouldn't this be a great time to use the f***ing compass to see if there's any other way to get where they need to go? Are those birds? Birds? Really? I mean, maybe you can't tell right away that they're witches, but there's no way you're mistaking those giant witch shape objects for birds. Where's his demon? That's indecision. That's what the gobblers are doing. I'm actually beginning to think this entire script is exposition, otherwise known as going full Tolkien. You never go full Tolkien. Come on with me. We'll take you someplace safe. Fine, Lyra finds a kid out in the middle of the frozen pond and they discover the whole gobbler separating the demons from kids subplot. But one of the chances of all the kids kidnapped, it's one of the two Lyra f***ing knows. 
Uh, Sam Elliott, Sam Elliott, a couple of these, whatever they're called, dudes. We see their demons instantly disintegrate. Does that mean they're dying the moment they're hit by these bullets? None of them even take a few seconds to bleed out? You're losing your touch, amigo. So am I. Don't worry. I'll get her back. Something tells me this movie would have been at least 100% better if it was solely an adventure film focused on these two characters. I'm like a witch's demon, Great King. I can go as far from him as I please. Over an hour into this movie, and all this world-building banter seared into our brain, and yet this conversation might as well be in another language. Were people told to bring the Cliff's Notes version of Philip Pullman's book with them to the screenings? Yay, another CGI battle where everything is evenly matched, and we'll have no clue how one character overpowers the other one. It's like they predicted the MCU a year in advance. Is that all? Isn't the jaw-dropping conclusion to this fight a bit graphic for a PG-13 film? I mean, I'm not complaining. It's just the MPA and its constant hypocrisy. What is this place? It's called the Experimental Station. What do you do here? That answer would seem to reside in the name of the place, Lyra. They're not even trying to hide it. They took Billy Costa away last week, and he's still gone. Don't worry, I've got a plan, right? You maybe also don't want to mention that you found Billy? You know, maybe put his friend at ease a bit? No? Rather just leave him to the torture of the unknown, then? I hardly ever use this one. But be quick. So this evil kid prison just lets the kiddos wander off through the building with no supervision? Even schools have hall passes. Come on, movie. We needn't be concerned with Lord Azrael any longer. Yeah, I kind of figured that, since he's barely been mentioned or seen since the first 15 minutes of the movie. I swear if this character wasn't played by Daniel Craig, I wouldn't have remembered he was in the movie, and would have thought they were introducing a new character with 20 minutes left. You'll never keep us apart. You want to grow up, don't you? Well, this is how you grow up. But we've seen that adults have demons as well, so not sure what any of this means. Seriously, what the f*** is this movie? I'm glad we have a couple sequels to let us in on everything that happened in this one, and... Oh, what's that? <sighs> Here it is. So wait, she's been carrying around that death beetle in her purse for this long, for just such an occasion? That's some pro-level conveniencing if I've ever seen it. Ah yes, the old flip a bunch of switches and throw a toaster in it trick. That's always sure to work. <laughs> Versus Ex Machina. Also, where did he come from that no one could have noticed? He's a giant f***ing bear. Better not touch me. Oh hey, it's Chekhov's witch we saw about an hour ago for like 30 seconds. It's like Ex Machina's on top of Ex Machina's up in here. Ex machina -ception? Well, now at least we know where Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2 got the idea for its snow-filled CGI battle. As they say, if you're going to steal, steal from something. There's a prophecy about that child. She will decide the war which is to come. You mean like in the sequels? <laughs> Oh man, sequels. <laughs> but if Azrael finds a way to travel between worlds, nothing will stop them from trying to take over. Then why exactly was the Magistrate not a fan of Azrael going on this journey in the first place? And why all this hubbub over getting the compass? Just let him do his thing, then step in and take over if he succeeds. I want to know what dust is. So do we, since that's all the characters talked about for the first 30 minutes of the film. And then it became all about ice bear hierarchies and child labor uprisings. That's an awful lot to sort out. And none of it will be, because you made a whole movie out of explaining the world, spouting out weird concepts, civilizations, and names, and not a single moment actually resolving any sort of the story. It's like a world where someone made a movie out of the Cimmerillion and never followed it up with The Lord of the Rings. I haven't been this disappointed since I poured a bowl of fruity pebbles and then realized there was no milk in the house. Where's the milk, movie? Where's the freaking milk? We'll set it right, Pan. Just let them try to stop us. They didn't need to. Domestic box office numbers took care of that. My name's Eve. Eve Moneypenny. I look forward to our time together, Miss Moneypenny. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. I will find you! How you doing there, dude?